Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to or rescues and reads. Thank you so much for dropping by and hanging out with me for a little bit. I am so grateful that you are here. Today we are here to do the thrilling thriller book tag. So in the name of full transparency, I actually had another video that was scheduled to go up at the same time that this video was going to go up, but it was going to be an unboxing of a bookish subscription service that I'm trying. It is not a new service. It is just new to me. And I was expecting to have it by this date, which is August 12th, because they say on their website that they typically ship their boxes between the 4th and the 8th of every month. But not only have I not received the box, but the box hasn't shipped. I sent a communication to them asking, you know, when I'm going to receive the box and they haven't responded. But I did just get an email today saying that their August boxes are delayed until at least the 15th. So I don't even know if I'm going to have the box by next weekend. So I have no idea when I'm going to be able to film that unboxing or what I'm going to put in its place. I was thinking about potentially posting early my book of the month September predictions or September new releases, but those typically require a bit of research and I like to take my time with them and make sure that I have all of the necessary information that I need and I didn't want to have to rush that. And so since I only just realized like a couple of days ago that I probably wasn't going to have the box, I had to make a quick decision about what I was going to do. I try not to do too terribly many tags on my channel just because I do know that they are somewhat filler content, but I was very excited to find this tag, the Thrilling Thrillers book tag. It was originally created by a beautiful chaos of books. I will be sure to link her channel down below, but I don't believe that she is posting videos anymore. And when I tried to access the original, it says that it is private. So I don't even know if you can access the video anymore, but I do have all of the questions and things. So we're going to go ahead and do it because y'all know that I am a thriller girly. That is one of my main genres of choice. It is definitely one of the main genres that I read. I absolutely love a good suspense thriller. And so I thought what better tag for me to do. So we are going to go ahead and jump right in. There honestly are not very many questions to this tag. So it shouldn't take too terribly long or at least normally it wouldn't, but I'm me and I'm notoriously long winded. So we're going to see how this is going to go. Starting with question number one, what was the last thriller you bought? So the last thrillers that I personally bought would have been the thrillers that came in my recent August book of the month box. There were actually three that I added to my box this month, but we'll go ahead and just talk about one in particular. Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister earlier this year, and I absolutely loved it. It was a thriller that played with the concept of time and going back in time in order to like solve a crime. And I absolutely loved the way that Jillian McAllister put that story together. And so when I saw that she was coming out with a new release this year, and when I saw it as an option for August, I absolutely jumped at the chance to add this to my box. I don't know too terribly much about what it is about so let me see. There's a man out there. His weapon isn't a gun or a knife. It's a secret. Olivia, 22 years old, no history of running away, last seen on CCTV entering a dead-end alley and not coming back out again, missing for one day and counting. Julia, the detective heading up the case. She knows what to expect. A desperate family, a ticking clock, and long hours away from her daughter. But Julia has no idea how close to home this case is going to get because her family's safety depends on one thing. Julia must not find out what happened to Olivia and must frame somebody else for her murder. What would you do? Okay, so we have a girl that's missing. We have a detective that is going to try to not solve the case because it sounds like maybe there's somebody who has blackmail on her. I don't know, but I'm definitely here for it. So we're going to go ahead and count this as the last thriller that I bought. Question number two is show us the last thriller that you added to your TBR. And the last thriller that I actually recently added to my TBR is Too Late by Colleen Hoover. I believe that this is a psychological suspense. And this is the book that is actually being sent to me as September's monthly Facebook gifting as part of the group that I'm a part of. And so this is on its way to me. So I don't currently have the physical copy, but I do know that it is coming to me. And so it is instantly added to my TBR and something that I'm going to try to get to in August. This is another one that I don't know too terribly much about, but it is Colleen Hoover and I'm going to read absolutely everything that she writes. This is a psychological suspense. It says Sloan will go through hell and back for those she loves and she does so every single day. Caught up with the alluring Asa Jackson, a notorious drug trafficker, Sloan has finally found a lifeline to cling to, even if it's meant compromising her morals. She was in dire straits trying to pay for her brother's care until she met Asa. But as Sloan became emotionally and economically reliant on him, he in turn developed a disturbing obsession with her. One that became increasingly increasingly dangerous every day. When undercover DEA agent Carter enters the picture, Sloane's surprised to feel an immediate attraction between them, despite knowing that if Asa finds out, he will kill him. And Asa has always been a step ahead of everyone in his life, including Sloane. No one has ever gotten in his way. No one except Carter. Together, Sloane and Carter must find a way out before it's too late. This definitely sounds like it is romantic suspense, so it is not just like a standard suspense thriller, but there's definitely going to be a romance as part of the plot, and that's totally okay. I am absolutely here for it. Like I said, it is currently on its way to me, 
and I will be reading it just as soon as I possibly can in August and I'm hyped for it. Question number three is what thriller did you have high expectations for but ultimately let you down? I of course have a couple of answers for this so we're gonna go ahead and start with The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This was one of my most highly anticipated reads of the year given my absolute love of No Exit by Taylor Adams and this absolutely fell flat for me. I'm not going to say too terribly much about this because I did go on a very long spoiler filled rant review in one of my recent wrap ups. I will try to remember to link it down below for you if you are interested but like I said it is spoiler filled so please be conscious of that. All I know is that I expected so much more going in and while the vibes were definitely there there was definitely some of the intensity that I was looking for. Ultimately the direction that Taylor Adams decided to take this story just did not work for me. I had a lot of technical issues with it. I found it to be extremely predictable and just disappointing overall so we're gonna go with this one. And of course my long-standing answer to a question like this is Final Girls by Riley Sager. Now we all know that I am truly a Riley Sager stan. I will probably read everything that he writes even if I don't necessarily love everything that he writes. He's pretty hit or miss for me but for the most part his stories are a good time. This was actually the very first book that I read by Riley Sager. It's a flippin miracle that I decided to continue with him as an author after the trash fire that was this book but this was my first experience with him and I absolutely hated it. This is another one that I'm not going to really say much about because I have ranted about it plenty on my channel over the years but this was a huge letdown for me and luckily every other book that I read even if it hasn't been my favorite it has been better than this. So this is certainly one that I had high expectations for given how much everybody seemed to love it and how everybody was like praising Riley Sager and this just did not work for me. Question number four is what tropes do you love and hate in thriller books? Okay so starting with hate I definitely do not like an unreliable narrator that is unreliable because they have been drinking or doing drugs to excess. I don't mind an unreliable narrator in general especially if it is done well but I think that using alcohol as the reason for the character to be unreliable is just overdone and it's quite lazy to be honest with you because literally the only reason why the author is making that character a drunk is so that you will believe that they are unreliable and also everybody else in the story will believe that that character is unreliable. So like I said I just think that it's really overdone and I kind of think that it is lazy storytelling. I won't necessarily automatically hate a book with this trope because I do still think that there are books out there that does this well but in general I just don't like seeing that anymore and I think there are much more creative ways to make a narrator unreliable so I really don't think like authors should be relying on drunk or high main characters in order to make them unreliable. Something else I really hate in thrillers are creepy kids. Now I don't like reading about kids in general. I don't prefer it. You know I'm not a child person. I am childless by choice so just as I don't really like hanging out with kids in real life I don't like reading about kids but I certainly do not like reading stories where kids are like the main villains. I just don't like it. There's just something about that that really gets to me. I don't know if like these thrillers with the creepy kids I just feel like are a manifestation of all of my worst fears about children coming true or not. I don't really know what my aversion is to creepy kids in books but I will actively avoid any book that basically has a creepy kid as the villain in the story. Another thing that I really don't like and I'm really tired of seeing are toxic women. So you have this woman who is seemingly happily married and then you have another woman who is coming out to completely take over this other woman's life and steal her husband and do all of these crazy terrible things. Or you have the crazy creepy mother-in-law who is doing all of these things to thwart her son's marriage. Like I just don't like that. I really feel like there are other ways that we should be utilizing women in stories. This is another trope that I don't like seeing in any type of story. I really don't like the mean girls aspect no matter what I'm reading. This is another one that I think is really overdone and I really think that we can just move past it and we should really just be placing better focus on women in these stories. So toxic women in thrillers is something that I do not like. And the final trope that I really don't like is just thrillers that really throw a ton of characters at you. So you really have no opportunity to get to know the characters, connect to them. You're trying to figure out who they are, how they're related to the story, how they're related to everybody else, what their background is. And it's just a lot. There are some stories that I feel that can do it well and can make it so it doesn't really seem all that confusing and overwhelming. But even those stories are still typically pretty mediocre and forgettable for me. Like I'm never going to remember all of these characters or how they were connected to one another. So I just don't prefer to see it. In terms of tropes that I love, y'all know that one of my favorite tropes of all time is just the wintry isolation thriller setting. That is by far my favorite. I mean, I love isolation thrillers in general, but when you add like the extreme weather aspect, that just works so incredibly well for me. I do of course also love the thrillers that contain the reluctant return home. Love to see a character who has a past that escaped their hometown and they're now having to return to that hometown for whatever reason and you know a lot of shit's going down. So I really do love the reluctant return home trope. Kind of along the same lines because those types of books typically do contain a past and present timeline. I do love thrillers that contain past and present timelines or even more than just past and present. So like you'll have multiple timelines, multiple characters, and you have no idea how they are connected or how they are going to weave together. I just think that is incredibly clever and well woven and it takes a lot of time, thought, and effort and I really applaud authors who are able to do that. And another trope that I just love recently is dark academia. We are definitely seeing an influx of dark academia 
Bohemia thrillers coming through. Of course, some of my favorites are If We Were Villains by Emil Rio and In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Both of those are fantastic representations of dark academia, and I'm certainly down to read more fantastic dark academia. So if you have any more suggestions, that's not the secret history. Don't recommend the secret history to me. If you have other recommendations for dark academia, please feel free to leave them down below because I'm always searching for more great dark academia stories. Question number five is recommend an underrated thriller. And I think I kind of want to recommend Alice Henderson's Dr. Alex Carter series. I've been talking about them a lot on my channel since I read A Solitude of Wolverines last year, and I recently read A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. And I just absolutely love her stories because first of all, so far out of the two that I've read, they have both been wintry isolation thrillers. They have all been incredibly high stakes because they involve animals. The main character is a wildlife biologist, and so she is typically off trying to do something in the name of animal conservation. So she's like doing studies and things, and people don't want these studies to happen. So they are sabotaging her, they are going after her, and she's in a fight for her life. And she's also trying to save the lives of these animals that she's out there studying. So wintry isolation, it is fast paced, it is high stakes. They are just so well put together. They are smart. And I hear almost nobody talking about her at all. I think like I'm the only booktuber that I've actually heard talk about her. And I really think that she deserves more hype. So if you were in the market for a great thriller, especially a great wintry isolation thriller, I highly recommend the Dr. Alex Carter series by Alice Henderson. And then another book that I love that I really don't hear talk about all that often is The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. This is a Southern Gothic nightmare. It is full of, as Audrey from Chapter and Converse would say, dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. It features a very disturbed and messed up family. And what happens when a woman who is a product of that family has to, of course, reluctantly return home, find her missing cousin, and all of the secrets and things that are revealed. I thought it was phenomenally done. The vibes in that story were absolutely immaculate. And I hear like nobody talking about it. But again, that story is several years old at this point. I do think it had a little bit of time in the spotlight when it first came out, but I hear nobody talk about it anymore. And so I do still think it's kind of underrated and I would highly recommend. Okay, so question number six says, pick three thrillers from your shelves, two you read and one you haven't. Get your viewers to comment which one they think you haven't read. So this was actually really difficult when I was going to my thriller suspense shelves because I realized that most of them on that shelves are books that I talk about pretty regularly or I have talked about at least once or twice on my channel. So I was trying to find books that I haven't really talked about at all that I have read. So to kind of make it a little bit harder for you to guess which ones I have or have not read. So I do have three here. The first is Bonfire by Kristen Ritter, Her Every Fear by Peter Swanson, and When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. So out of these three, which two do you think I have read and which one do you think I have not read? Question number seven, it says, people are often intimidated by the thriller genre. Recommend a thriller for beginners. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy here because I actually just recently made a video on all of my thriller recommendations for beginners. This video was made, I don't know, maybe two months ago. So it is very, very recent. I would still recommend all of these books for beginners. And I tried to recommend thrillers that were not really dark, gritty, gruesome. They were on the lighter side. So just in case you were kind of concerned about that content, I tried to recommend thrillers that don't really contain that. I also tried to recommend thrillers that were on like the fast bingeable side so that they would be easy to fly through. So I'm going to go ahead and link that down below for you to check out. If you are a little bit nervous about getting into thrillers and you are not sure where to start, please take a look at that video and you will hopefully find some great recommendations for you. Question number eight is what is your all-time favorite thriller? I don't necessarily think I have a favorite all-time thriller, but there are definitely some that come to mind in terms of ones that I know that I will recommend over and over and over again. Of course, No Exit by Taylor Adams. I talk about that one all the time. And now I'm going to definitely talk about the ones by Alice Henderson that I mentioned a little bit earlier. I will certainly always recommend things by Karen Slaughter, but primarily Pretty Girls or The Good Daughter. The Good Daughter is definitely up there as one of my favorite thrillers of all time. And The Roanoke Girls is probably even one of my favorite thrillers of all time, just because I love the vibes of that story. And I will also say If We Were Villains, that is definitely one of my favorites of all time. It is certainly my favorite dark academia of all time. So those are some of my favorites. And then question number nine is tag some fellow thriller lovers. So I don't really know who has or has not done this tag. So I will go ahead and just tag two channels right off the top of my head that I know are big thriller lovers like me. And if they haven't done this tag, they can certainly do so. I'm going to tag Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand and Audrey from Chapter and Converse to do this tag. But of course, everybody's welcome to do this tag. So if you do end up deciding to do this tag, please comment your link down below so that I can go ahead and check it out and see what you have to say about some of your favorite thrillers. All right, y'all. And that was the Thrilling Thrillers book tag. That is it for this video. Please comment down below and let me know some of your favorite or least favorite tropes in thrillers. I would love to know. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to connect with y'all in one of those next videos or connect with you on any of the other platforms I'm a part of. I always leave links to my Goodreads, Instagram, and IG threads down below if you would like to connect with me on any of those other platforms. But until next time, guys, bye.